Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to we're going to look at how you can set up the performance initialization for the Embarer 175. Uh, to go to the performance init page uh, you need to press the perf uh, button and the perf button will bring you to the perf index which will contain the performance init uh, initialization but also the departure limits, the cruise, the descent, the landing, the takeoff, the climb, uh, the approach speed, the GALM, and the perf data, right? It contains a lot of information and is only page one of two. Because if you go to the next page, it will give you some more information like fuel management and EO uh, range. For now, we're gonna focus on the perf init. The perf init by default will uh, set up the tail based on the flight uh, you, or the one you provided. Because by default in this early access version, of this aircraft it isn't populated so if you don't specify anything i think it will be randomized uh, so keep that in mind that you might want to change it before flying now we've got the perfector which is cool and we've got the fuel reserve the fuel reserve is currently not i would say animated uh, you can set it either to 30 minutes or to uh 2200 uh 2205 lb right but uh, as mentioned in their documentation it's not uh programmed so it's simply if it I would say if you change anything it, the aircraft will ignore it mm -hmm. so there's one thing which you might need to set up and that's the takeoff and landing view so the takeoff and landing view normally could be uh, collected from the uh, flight plan right so based on your flight plan you can see okay hey what's the uh, takeoff and landing view what's the required values and if you know it right so I'm gonna simply use some uh, dummy values you can specify it like this, so 500 600, and then press that button over here, which will load the takeoff and landing view correctly. Now, based on this, you can see that there are more pages, right? So let's press the next page. On the next page, we can see the cruise altitude. The cruise altitude refers to the altitude where you are uh, located on, if you're, I would say, in the air. Uh, and that's the maximum altitude where you're cruising. And currently it's set to uh, 50, but if you want to set it to, for example, 3 uh, or 250, uh, so flight level 25,000 feet, you can either press it like this or do it like this. And then simply hit the button over here and that will update the flight plan or the cruise altitude, right? The cruise winds refers to the wind and the direction, the direction of the wind and the, I would say, strength of the wind. So it's really important to would say uh, configure it. So let's assume that it comes from 320 with a speed of uh, 22. That's how you set it up, and then press the option over here, and it will be added now. That's really cool, right? Now there are a few things which you need to keep in mind, and that's the center of gravity. So according to the manual is uh, that if the uh, center of gravity value has a uh, say white background as it currently is, there might be some issues with it because the calculated center of gravity for takeoff, the white background means the highlights it's out of the limits. So you might need to adjust it. Well, how to adjust it? That's I would say kind of easy, right? Because you can adjust it using the buttons. But before doing that, we're gonna need to configure the zero fuel weight, right? So zero fuel weight, we're gonna set to two, five, uh, three, three. Zero, 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 not three. Three zeros, yes, but not three, three, three. And that is the um, zero fuel weight. There is no information if it will uh, pick it automatically, but the zero fuel weight is um, entered manually, right? So it's not automatically being picked up currently. Uh, it might be once the SimBrief integration is fully working, uh, but that's not the case. Uh, so if we press the option here, it will eventually show us the gross weight. And that's the gross weight is the fuel which we have. That's the live fuel which is in the aircraft. And then add it to the zero fuel weight and that will be updated. Now let's have a look at the center of gravity, right? Because it's, it's a little bit weird because it shows white because it's incorrect. So if you uh, change the white uh, or the weight, sorry, in the uh, this nice option, no, in this nice option, uh, let's remove this. Uh, 
you can see that you can't change it here, right? Because the center of gravity could only be changed when you set up the flight. Although it contains some parameters where you could set it up, uh, it doesn't contain it here. So keep in mind that you need to record the center of gravity once you program the flight. And then I would say adjust the values, right? So for now, what we can try is we can guess it. But of course, that's not the way you should do it. But let's set it to... Uh, say uh, what was it I think I said to 44 and you can see I can't change it right because it's calculated I thought that you could modify it I thought that I also tried it but it looks like that you can't really change it uh, so here it says okay if you set the input weights prior to loading the flight you might have to change the center of gravity manually after loading the aircraft in the W uh, and B menu um, but the WMB menu I'm looking at it and I was also expecting it here to be honest but I can't see it over here right where is that center of gravity that's kind of weird you would expect it here uh, one of the other things is which is kind of weird is that these values are now all gone uh, but it could be due to the fact that I'm using a beta version so what we can do is simply reduce the payload right I'm playing around with this right now, but actually that's not the way you, sh you should do it, right? So what I'm now simply doing is throwing away some, uh, let's say, passengers and some baggage, and that resolves the issue because now the center of gravity is in the green zone where it should be. So if you see values over there, you might have used some incorrect values initially, and uh, due to the fact that it doesn't work, it will result in these kind of issues. So be aware of that. Once we've done that, we can go to the uh, third page, right? Which is uh, page number three, where you can set certain uh, speeds. So to be honest, these speeds all look nice, right? These options all look nice, I should say. But if you press the options, you can see that everything is grayed out. And that's logic because it hasn't been, I would say, configured yet or being worked yet in this uh, nice simulator or in this nice Embarer 175. It's also uh, mentioned in the release notes that they're working on this. So do expect that they will, I would say, fix this in uh, one of the future versions which they're gonna deliver. Once you've done that, of course, you can, I would say, uh, do everything you want and uh, go back to the perf page because you can also see that the cost index which you would normally program is not uh, done. Now, if you go back, you can go to the proof index page again and go to the takeoff. The takeoff contains some interesting information, right? It contains the runway heading, which is the heading of the runway. Uh, the gross weight and the gross weight is the one we just programmed. We can see the P alt and the B set, uh, which is the barometer, if I'm correct, and the, uh, the altitude and the elevation. So it's below sea level, so that's why you see a minus 12. And there you can uh, define the runway slope, which is the uh, angle of the runway, and again the uh, wind, because the cruise wind is different compared to the, or could be different compared to the uh, wind where you take off, but you can still program it like this. So then we'll say, hey, uh, this is the, the uh, direction and this is the speed. This is kind of weird because it looks like that, that this isn't 100% correct, but uh, that could be one of those issues which is still uh, in the uh, sim or in the aircraft. Then you can, of course, change the uh, weather conditions, right? Uh, dry, wet, or uh, not sure what the last option is. Not sure <laughs> where it stands for, but hey, you can set it and then hit the next page where you can uh, define the flaps. Right, so flaps have been set to two, but you can press the option here and then change the flaps to, for example, one, then we'll adjust the value. So don't try to adjust the value here. You need to get, press the OR button, then change the option here. That will bring you back to this page. Uh, center of gravity uh, and temperature are uh, collected automatically. And the mode flex two temp is set to off, right? Which is the flex temperature, uh, which is also known for the A320s where you could set it up. Uh, same thing as for the TO mode, the data set uh, where it says data set uh, ATTCS. I'm not sure what it is meaning, but I don't think that you uh, can configure them because it hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, so most of the things are also depending on the VNAV, right? Or are configured for the VNAV, sorry. But what you will see is that you can't really uh, set it correctly. Uh, 
So that's cool, right? We now set the uh, runway heading. We made sure that the pressure, uh, the pressure altitude, that's where PL stands for the barometric settings, uh, are set, although they're not simulated yet. Uh, the runway slope, that's based on the uh, used runway, right? So the used runway, if you select the runway to, uh, in your flight plan, that will be automatically populated. We've got the runway condition, right? You can We can change it as you could see, uh, the gross weight, we went to it as well as the static uh, value for the runway elevation. That one is uh, automatically being pulled from the information. Uh, what are other things? The flex temperature and the data set. Uh, those were the, were the ones we, we just discussed, right? These are also not, I would say, uh, automated yet. So uh, don't worry about that if you think, hey, why can't I use that functionality? Well, that's because there it's still work in progress. Uh, this is what we call the uh, takeoff init page, right? So you have get the performance in it, then you've got the takeoff in it. And as you can see on the bottom of the uh, screen, we can now go to the takeoff. And the takeoff uh, allows you to, let's say, uh, adjust the V1, the V2, and the VFS, as well as the VFR. Um, so that's what we call the, the takeoff page. And the takeoff page, uh, all those values are automatically being calculated, right? Uh, the flaps, of course, are being, I would say, collected by the uh, flaps from the flaps page, which we uh, uh, just set, right, in the perf init page. And then you've got the takeoff trim, and that one is also automatically being calculated based on the flap settings. So in our case, I would say we're good to go for this takeoff because it has done the it set, has set the uh, the pitch to ten. Uh, and it has calculated all the nice other uh, V uh, speeds for us. Once you've done that, you can continue, of course, with the climb. Uh, and the climb page uh, also contains the trans uh, transition altitude, right? Which is the uh, value which is uh, hard coded. I don't think you can uh, can change it. Uh, and all those other things which you see on this page are not set, right? So the only thing you can uh, change is the cruise altitude. But hey, why would we change the cruise altitude here? Because we already did that. Uh, but all the other things are not, um, I would say, animated or built yet. So I do think, I do hope that they will be uh, will be done automatically. Uh, the thing which I want to uh, highlight is that the top of climb, which stands for the TOC, uh, that altitude, uh, that's the flight plan you want to stay on route, right? That's when you're, let's say, on the uh, destination altitude. Uh, that's something you can configure probably, but I didn't try it out yet. And the ETA, that will be automatically calculated. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, that will be done based on the flight plan and the speed, of course. Um, the... Other settings like the uh, top of climb distance to go, uh, the few remaining, etc. That is all being marked red in the manual. Uh, so that probably means that it isn't, I would say, correctly uh, or correctly programmed yet. You can see that the speed is set to 300. And so that's the maximum speed. Uh, and um, that's what you can configure here. Once we've gone to that section, we can go to the cruise. And the cruise altitude is, I'd say, a little bit as the other pages, right? The cruise altitude, uh, I would say, the only thing which is currently uh, working is the uh, planned altitude. But all the other settings, they're not implemented yet. So I'm not going to go to them. Probably will record a new video uh, once they are uh, released, right? Once the a new version has been released, that's the correct wording. Descending, right? Descending, okay, hey, what can you configure here? Once you're in the phase of descending the aircraft, there is also nothing you can configure except for the transition altitude, right? The transitional level. Uh, that's a user configured value, which uh, is currently set to a value, uh, which is ultimately being uh, done by the flight simulator. It's a 180, which is a kind of the same as uh, the one we saw earlier, right? All the other ones are currently not working and you can't program them. So that uh, is a pity for you if you expected that they would have been animated. But that unfortunately isn't done yet. But do believe me, they're working hard to get it working uh, for you as soon as possible. So let's assume that we're almost ready for landing, right? 
and then we can configure the landing and the landing here you can see the same things right so by default the flaps are set to full uh, to be honest what well, i expect that it would bring us to the landing init page right because how would it calculate all these things without any values which we provide well this looks like to be i would say an issue with the uh, pages because it should have brought us to the landing initialization page where we can set up the runway heading as well as the information for the uh, airport uh or say the destination airport like for example the wind and the wind direction of course but also uh, we can uh, change the uh, approach type, right? It's currently set to MPA and CAT1, but you can also set it to uh, CAT2 and CAT3. Then it will change this value. And then it will use that for the speeds, if I understood correctly. Uh, the uh, flaps can be easily changed by pressing this uh, left uh, number three button, as well as the icing can be changed over here using the yes and no uh, buttons here. Once you've done that, of course, you can go back to that uh, other page, uh, which is uh, the landing page. Well, let's first, I would say, put in some dummy numbers, right? Uh, let's, uh, I would say, assume that it's uh, in our destination airport, it's uh, 10 degrees or zero degrees. And you can see it automatically will calculate the... Uh, Temperature in the uh, Fahrenheit, and then let's assume that we've got the same wind over there, oh, same wind direction and speed. And you can set it over here, and here you can see something weird because in the uh, departure page it was being automatically being set. In this case, it's not being set here, but that's not a real issue for now. Work in progress. Uh, runway heading. Since we didn't select the runway, that's why it didn't populate it. But if you would say have a runway at uh, 240 degrees you can set it like that and that will uh, populate this information so it looks like that the wind is i would say depending on both the runway heading as well as the wind information over here now if you would go to the landing uh, page again you can see that all the values have now been populated so that's really cool right so nothing which we need to uh do right now you can still see that there's some other pages like the approach speed uh where uh, some static values are being programmed right these are the uh maximum speeds with flap one you can fly 180 max uh, with flap uh, two 160 and then with the other values of course uh, less and less um uh, it's said to uh fixed or green dot uh you can't Currently can't change anything over here, but hey, that's what it is. The same thing is for the departing limit. Uh, the speed limit is set to uh, 111, right? Uh, after that, uh, it will, you, I would say, you could fly faster. But this all has to do with VNAV. And since VNAV hasn't been added to the aircraft yet, don't expect this part to work. So here ends this video. In this video, we went to the whole perf in a page and all the different options which you could set uh, at this moment, right? Because this is, uh, I would say, version uh, 090 of the aircraft. I uh, do expect some more releases coming up in the future, which will bring you some more information and some more functionalities. I uh, hope you liked this video. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.